Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. alaikum. Welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ahmed Nawaz, and we've got a lot to discuss on the show today. We'll be starting off with the Asia Cup, of course. India have suffered uh, an almost horrific defeat at the hands of Sri Lanka, and they're almost on the verge of being knocked out. Just there on the corner, just a push would probably do it now. And, uh, of course, uh, Sri Lanka winning the toss, opting to bowl first, that did give us an indicator. Sri Lanka produced an impressive run chase, making their case stronger for the final qualification in this event. Whereas with this massive blow, India is now staring at an early exit from the Asia Cup. India's hope is now relying on results of Pakistan's matches. Indian fans would want Afghanistan to beat Pakistan today, then India to beat Afghanistan on Thursday, and then they would be praying for Sri Lanka's win over Pakistan on Friday. If wishes become horses, then the situation will see Pakistan, India and Afghanistan tied on two points apiece and net run rate will come into account to determine who will play Sri Lanka in the final on 11th. Despite two wins from the two games, even Sri Lanka is not guaranteed a place in the final. If Afghanistan beats Pakistan and Pakistan beats Sri Lanka, then it will have three teams tied with four points apiece and two teams with better net run rate will play the final. In all the scenario, today's match between Pakistan and Afghanistan is important as far as the tournament's future is concerned. If Pakistan beats Afghanistan, they will face Sri Lanka in Sunday's final and knock out arch rivals India in the process. There you have it. All you need to know about that game. K. Asif Ahmed, your thoughts on the action mm. that we witnessed. Uh, mm. I want you to analyze the game completely. Mm. All right. First of all, you know that I was pretty much hopeful about Indian side. A, a very strong side and of course then when you talk about the match winners they've got plenty of match winners name anyone KL Rahul their captain Rohit Sharma Virat Kohli then Hardik Pandya and of course that uh, Ashwin Chahal and Ashti Bunavishwar Kumar so lots of names there uh, what uh, where went wrong actually the issue is with the captaincy Rohit Sharma uh, you were talking about his attitude before the uh, before the program in your intro Yes, I want to talk about his attitude. His attitude is not friendly at all. And if you uh, see that the way he's behaving with the players, do remember that when uh, uh, Sri Lanka was on the up in the earlier um, seven, eight overs and everyone was in pressure and Chahal uh, has taken a wicket. So uh, there, Virat Kohli was there who went there and who kissed Chahal. That's the fantastic and awesome gesture in the ground that you're in pressure and you're releasing and you're coming up with your players. But where was the captain Rohit Sharma? This is a question mark. Then we have seen Bunaveshwar Kumar drop the catch there and the way uh, Rohit Sharma behaved, it was such an amateur behavior. He, were, he hit the ball on the ground and uh, I didn't like it because you're playing uh, cricket. A cricket is a sportsman spirit game. It's not, a, it's not like football that you are uh, kicking off. Anyways, now uh, you see Bunaveshwar Kumar bowling second last over. I was talking to my friends as well, you know, and uh, uh, he was trying to hit on the right area, and that was the outside the off stem. And when you are uh, uh, bowling on the block hole, um, a, a yorker like which is called uh, your throwing ball outside the off stem would be really difficult to batter to hit over the point. Uh, then there is no need to to keep your fielder on the short third man. Your fielder should be on the deep third man because uh, lots of chances for the edge, and this would happen. And uh, he got boundary. Uh, second thing, uh, Rohit Sharma, I do not understand that uh, why DK, Dinesh Karthik is not playing. Burnt, not good with batting at all. And then you have seen his uh, uh, wicket keeping. Uh, you know, when Shinaka was on 8, 9, he has missed the chance of uh, uh, stumping. And this is the Shinaka who went on 33 not out with the victory. Uh, I must talk about Raja Pakse, the way he played. You know, Ishwin and Chahal, both they were bowling really nicely and uh, his uh, understanding of cricket like Raja Paksa because he plays, you know, T10 league, T20 leagues all over the world. So uh, he understands the scenario that if a baller is coming up and baller is coming really dangerously, the ball is spinning, just go and try to hit him hard. And this is what he has done with the, against the Chahal and then Ishwin as well. He went uh, uh, down the cross. Uh, he went uh, down the wicket and uh, hit a cross shot over the mid wicket for two sixes. You know, against Chahal and with the Ashwin, uh, Ashwin as well. So I think uh, full marks to Sri Lanka. They came up with a plan. They played really nicely and a very strong side. India, 
uh, knocked out India, and you were saying that uh, they're on the corner. But I'm not saying they're on the corner. I'm saying goodbye, India. Uh, that's very important. But, you know, I think analyzing this entire thing, we'll just go towards a short break. But when we come back, we need to discuss certain things in detail. Right, welcome back. Before the break, we were discussing Sri Lanka and India's game. And of course, Asif highlighted some very crucial points of the game itself. Uh, but Asif, uh, I want you know a quick word on the Sri Lankan side. We've been observing them, the changes that they went through, even when the country was in all sorts of political chaos and whatever was happening. The cricket still stayed intact. They beat Australia, they beat Pakistan. Uh, now they're into the Asia Cup, they've beaten India, and they're in the finals almost. So uh, we followed these youngsters and we kept on saying that Sri Lanka also had the similar problem with senior players left. But when their youngsters come in, they play a very, uh, you know, a, a particular brand of cricket and that is play natural uh, cricket, play with your natural abilities and strike the ball if you want to. Well, that's right. You know, Ahmed, uh, everyone was talking about that India and Pakistan are the most favorite for the finals. And after losing match against uh, the first match they, uh, they've lost against uh, Afghanistan, everyone was talking about their... Uh, a bad patch and each and everything but now the way they have came back and strongly bounced back actually and beaten India last night uh, is showing something positivity in their cricket and the positivity in their mm. attitude towards yeah. cricket towards winning I think and mm. uh, uh, one important thing is that they play like a unit and uh, this is really important in cricket and this is what Pakistan uh, is doing from last couple of years and now Sri Lanka is doing right now, the, their batters, their bowlers, mm -hmm. and uh, their spin department, if you talk about anywhere. Uh, they see the, the way Tish Kana bowling last night, uh, uh, the rest of the, uh, the bowlers, you talk about their Dilshan. Uh, uh, so I think uh, when you are coming up with the team effort and uh, everyone is playing their role and then the captain. I mean, just for T20, this is a team that can surprise every opposition. Even I see them in the World Cup being very strong. Honestly, they surprised me because mm. I was pretty much sure about the India because they got plenty of match winners. But uh, I think that uh, if you are doing the uh, right job with the right direction and if you're putting efforts, I think results come out. And that, mm. this is what uh, Sri Lankan team is doing. So uh, now we cannot take them easy. <laughs> we shouldn't take them easy, I think. <laughs> but uh, I think that will be that. Uh, Sri Lanka uh, deserves uh, appreciation. Congratulations to Sri Lankan cricket and their fans. They've deserved every bit of this victory. Hard luck to the Indians as well at the same time. Like I said, fantastic sight, but they need to address problems in the dressing room. Don't put skeletons in your closet. Open that <laughs> closet up, take the skeletons out and address those problems. Address that, you know, you forced a captaincy change in your team. Address that you forced squad changes because you didn't want allegiance towards Virat Kohli. These things happened in the team. So we, they need to address this now and, you know, uh, all sorts of claims have been coming, including this dressing room environment, including Rohit Sharma's attitude on the field, including uh, some sources claiming that for the past six months, he's not even physically fit to play for India. So there are certain things that are happening, although he got a, a good score yesterday, but all in vain, wasn't it? It's about the leadership that needs to come out from a captain. That's right. That wasn't there. Now, Asif, coming to the game that we've got tonight. We're facing Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. There's already been a lot of hype about this game, and I always say that it's another uh, classic encounter of two teams going against each other. Uh, well, of course, you know, Afghanistan is playing such nice cricket and especially in T20 format, they got plenty of match winners. If you talk about their uh, batters, uh, you know, uh, they have a, a missile sort of batter like uh, Hazratul Azizai. And uh, if he rocks, then the opposition shocks. <laughs> and um, uh, if you talk about the rest of the batters like... Uh, uh, Najibullah and Gul uh, Gurbaz, Ramanullah Gurbaz. Then they have quality spinners, uh, Rashid Khan, of course, and um, Mujib Rahman. So uh, you you were talking about Nabi as well. So I think that uh, a very balanced side. But good thing from Pakistan that Pakistan, uh, you know, Saklan Mushtaq in uh, uh, in press conference, he said that we do not have only Babar Azam. We have several uh, finishers and match winners. And of course, you know, Mohammed Rizwan is in good touch. And uh, the query is that what, what's happening with Fakhar Zaman? Because lots of questions, lots of concerns, which uh, I have to ask. Because if 
he is not in the form. You know, we are heading towards World Cup and befo right before the World Cup in a huge tournament like Asia mm. Cup, if we cannot perform, it's a question mm. mark. Uh, Asif, it's Charger tonight. Um, things are very particular. It's not the way Cricket Stadium as, as we know the game. See, Sharjah are. belongs to Pakistan. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about the Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. So, but thank you very much, Asif, for joining us uh, on Sports Extra. It was great having you. Of course, we've got to discuss football as well at the same time. And uh, like we told you that uh, there's a lot to discuss. We've been joined on Sports Extra by uh, sports expert Ali Abbas. Assalamu alaikum, Ali. How are you? Right, Ali, first question to you has got to be, we're going to be discussing the South Asian Football Federation Championship. Our girls in green were up against India. And I've been saying this over the past week, so have many other football experts as well, that don't worry about the results. After chaos in Pakistan football that we've seen over the past uh, two, three years, lack of infrastructure, every difficulty that has been there, just getting a women's team to participate in an international competition is already a big achievement. Obviously, Ahmed, we're coming out of a crisis which should have been resolved a lot quicker than it actually has. So, I think for now, like you said, we should just be counting our blessings that, blessings that we even have a team out there which is playing football at the moment. So, I mean, yes, the result could have been better, but on the other hand, it's one step forward after taking, I don't know, 100 steps back. So, that is one thing that we should be happy about. And then... Once we sort of get some uh, get a rhythm, we can actually start criticizing and evaluating and seeing, we, and seeing where we can improve. But for now, like you mentioned, we're just glad that uh, our women are playing football again. Pakistan Football Federation has started functioning again as a whole. Absolutely. But of course, they were against India, who's got a better infrastructure. 3-0 was the scoreline. But like I said, these girls technically need to uh, go uh, you know, somewhere else now to uh, face quality oppositions because... These are countries that have got a better infrastructure, a better playing time as well, a better match practice, if you want to call it, more experience. Uh, of course, the girls did try a certain uh, strategy that was, of course, given to them by the team manager or coach and uh, tried the long ball as well, but were not that effective. We're not getting to that uh, passes on the wings as well. So technically, obviously, there's a long way to go for these girls, but they won't mind the score line. And then, like I say, that, uh, like you mentioned as well, it's a step forward. I think in terms of the intensity, it was a good start. But like you mentioned, you know, when you have a lot of investment, when you have proper coaching in place, you are actually coaching the players to uh, play the whole 90 minutes. Uh, you could sort of feel that maybe in the start, there was the uh, anxiety and the intensity which sort of drives the players forward. But as time went by, you could see that the experience of the Indian team let them prevail. But like I said, this match probably came too soon for us after just uh, after uh, ending the recent fiasco uh, of Pakistan Football Federation. So lots to look forward to, more positives than negatives, which is something we don't normally say after we lose to India. But in this particular case, we can do that. And hopefully as the infrastructure improves, as the investment comes in, we're going to be seeing better results. But for now, we have to be satisfied with what we have. Definitely. But, but still a long way to go. The girls, of course, have... Uh, got other games that they will be participating in. But I just have one message, I think, uh, clearly from all of us. The girls were really proud of you. Job well done. Like I said, results don't matter. It's the intent. You were uh, carrying that national flag and uh, you've done all of us proud. So congratulations to each and every individual, uh, each and every girl of this Pakistan women's team, the management and Pakistan Football Federation. And at the end as well, uh, the Indian coach uh, of uh, their women's football team as well. Uh, we just, of course, received these details as well uh, regarding uh, the game. That are Right immediately after the game, uh, the Indian head coach, uh, Surin Chetri, presented a memento to Pakistan uh, head coach, Adil Rizki, after the match. Well. A beautiful gesture coming out there as well. So I think that needs to be appreciated. Now, coming to the uh, world of football, uh, headlines all around. But Ali Abbas, what on earth has happened to Chelsea just immediately? I mean, a man who's just won you three trophies and after a couple of games, you just decide to sack him immediately. Uh, I am as surprised as you are. Uh, I was talking to my brother recently and I told him that uh, I do not expect this particular regime which has taken over Chelsea to sack managers like Abramovich did. And probably the thing which surprises me the most, Ahmed, is you are the biggest spenders of this previous transfer window which just ended. You spend all of that money with Thomas Tuchel in charge. You spend all of that money knowing that Thomas Tuchel is getting the players that he needs. Why have you bought in so many players when you did not even see him as a manager in the future? I have a feeling something else 
went on in the background which maybe we're not aware of but it makes no sense to be spending nearly 230 240 million buying players like obama yang so expensive even at the age of 34 because thomas tuchel wanted him and now you've sacked him and you're bringing in most probably you're bringing in graham potter who has done a fantastic job for brighton but how is he going to manage so many superstars in a dressing room I think Chelsea's season is officially over now and I think they're going to struggle to qualify for the top four. I, this is this is one of the most surprising decisions. We have always heard that the Americans are quite disconnected when it comes to football. Uh, whoever is the advisor who advised the new chairman, the new owner of Chelsea Football Club to take this decision has officially ended Chelsea's season. And yeah, surprise. I just want to see how low they can go from here. What? You know, it's 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 very difficult, and I think Asad is clearly devastated. Yeah. Our header says goodbye, Thomas Tuchel, as he's left this world. But that's not the case. But I think sentiments are are the same around that it's a shocking decision that has just happened. But you never know uh, whether there's reconsideration or not. Whether is there whether there's a stand from the players? I I don't see that coming. No. I think uh, it, it it's just gonna go. Uh, in vain as it has been in the past with certain football clubs. But now coming to more Champions League games as well. How exciting is it to see Haaland and Mbappe now going into action? Oh, very exciting. I think uh, one of the reasons why Mad City bought in Haaland is because they want to win the Champions League and they believe that he's going to give them that cutting edge. So uh, that doesn't really add, put a lot of pressure on Haaland because from the way he plays, he doesn't really take much pressure. Uh, so exciting to see what happens there. But for Mbappe, I think if PSG PSG are due a Champions League now, and the amount of money that Mbappe is being paid, the amount of control that has been given to him over PSG, uh, I would be really surprised if PSG do not do well. I, if I would be really surprised if uh, he manages to get to the Champions League because it's a lot of pressure on a 22, 23 year old. And if they can sort of get the squad gelled up, which has been an, an issue recently with the developments uh, related to Mbappe, uh, I would be surprised to see a PSG go all the way. Manchester City, on the other hand, are a team that I'm looking out for. And I would really, if it's not Liverpool, I would like to see a City PSG final just to see those both go head to head. But, you know, that's one year away from now and a lot of action to look forward to in between. Uh, City's intent is very clear this season. Of course, they're just coming from a draw in the Premier League. They won't take that lightly. But uh, they want to make amends and make an impact immediately on the Champions League. Uh, absolutely. I think, honestly, they have had better scores than they have right now. I mean, they've let go of Raheem Sterling. They've let go of Gabriel Jesus. Uh, there's one thing that you would have noticed about City is Emma, they never used to draw games in the previous season. They would either lose or they would win. Because it was impossible to keep City out for 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes. And this time around, despite having Haaland, they've been held by two teams, Newcastle and Aston Villa. So how do they address that? Because you sort of feel like there's no one on the bench to come on and revolutionize things. Uh, Raheem Sterling does not come on. Gabriel Jesus does not come on. I know it's that a team that are completely reliant on De Bruyne and Haaland at the moment. You know that Bernardo Silva is not... Clearly, he wanted to leave in the summer and how long it takes for him to come up to speed. So there are certain issues at Manchester City which are being covered at the moment. Obviously, they're not huge issues because of the way they're playing, but you have to acknowledge the fact that they're still second in the league behind Arsenal. So Manchester City are taking time to adapt to this new structure, the new philosophy that they want to play with, having one particular centre forward in terms of Haaland. But I was surprised to see that they've drawn two games till now because even last season, I believe they drew one game and then just lost two or three games. For Man City to draw games is really difficult because they will tie the opposition out, but they will definitely score. And they will only lose if the opposition outscored them. For Nandinho is not there uh, for Man City as well. So there's certain players which are missing and I'm, I'm really excited to see how things develop. But for now, you know, once your, once your uh, mega signing is scoring, everything looks fine. But let's see what happens. Alibas, is that a case then? Because uh, if, if it becomes a case of reliance on one individual uh, that we've seen in the past with many, many clubs, yeah. uh, then it does become a problem if he goes out of form and if that talisman yeah. isn't there anymore. I think, Ahmed, one thing about Haaland is his injury record because he uh, his goal to game ratio is pretty fantastic, but he never really plays 37, 38 games in a season. He always misses seven to eight to nine games every season. I, I do not want to sound too cynical in saying that he's going to get an injury. 
nor do i hope that he gets an injury <laughs> especially not on live television i won't be saying that but i do have a feeling that there's going to be a few particular games where uh, city are not going to be without haland and how they cope is going to be something because last season they had to rely on de bruyne to get a lot of goals uh, especially at the end this time around if haland goes missing what do manchester city do because there's no gabriel jesus coming off the bench there's no raheem sterling coming off the bench so it's uh, uh, i'm a little surprised that they let a few players go but Uh, how overly reliant they are on Haaland will only be exposed once he is not available, and I'm sure Pep Guardiola does not want to see that. But we, being sports analysts and fans, are excited to see—not excited, but interested to see what happens if Haaland is not named on the starting eleven. Well, we can't ignore the fact that Real Madrid still remains the most dominant team in Champions League right now, even. Uh, uh, obviously, I mean, uh, you know. Uh, a Scottish team trying to take on Real Madrid was never going to go too well, was it? But uh i i think uh in the group stages you know you expect them to go through real madrid won the champions league last season no one really expected them to the uh, three comeback w- uh, wins and then you know uh, sort of just absorbing the pressure from liverpool and winning it at the end they have the experience so i wasn't really surprised by the result but you know they managed to hold on to a lot of their players they still have kareem benzema vinicius junior is in good form they've let casemiro go So how does that really play? I mean, they've let that ideal midfield trio fi- finally break down. So that's another thing that we should be looking forward to, and who exactly steps up uh, to fill that void which Casemiro leaves uh, to your uh, great uh, amusement is something that I want to see as well because that strengthens Manchester United. But uh, not really surprised. I think uh, near the quarterfinal stage, you would actually be seeing the teams that are favourites. This time around, it's very difficult to name a clear favourite for the Champions League because of Liverpool's form as well. Definitely, that is the case. Well, Ali Bas, thank you very much for joining us on Sports Extra. That wraps it up. Until the next show, from me and the entire team, it's goodbye for now.